All right guys, today we're doing a review on Lego's brand new loop coaster and apologies, this is going to be a kitchen review because truthfully, these just don't fit in our room where we typically do reviews. Um, they're just too large for the table. So today we're gonna do it on our kitchen counter. Um, but it's gonna be a little bit different than other reviews you've probably seen on YouTube. It's not all gonna be positive because truthfully, we want you guys to know the truth. A lot of other YouTube reviewers are sponsored by Lego and therefore they get the product for free. We don't, we spend our own money. We bought this 100% with our own money. Nothing was sponsored or sent to us by Lego. So this is our true feedback and what we really think about it. And at the end, we'll tell you if you should buy it or not. And with that said, I think it's gonna make the most sense to actually start with what we don't like about it. Uh, and then we'll get to what we love about it at the end. So as we mentioned, we used our own money for this. And speaking of money, that is actually the first drawback that we wanna talk about. So let's start with the price. It costs 399 US dollars or over $400 after tax. And it contains 3,756 parts. While they may sound like a lot of parts, it's almost 11 cents per part, which is honestly just insane for a Lego set. If you look back to sets that came out even earlier this year, those were already high compared to last year and years prior. And we previously told you guys that in the past, we've aimed for about five to six cents per part. So this set being at 11 cents is absolutely ridiculous. It's actually one of the most expensive per piece sets that we've reviewed. I mean, if you really think about it, $400 goes a long way. In most parts of the country, that would be a good portion of somebody's monthly rent. It'd be a car payment or it'd even cover groceries for more than a month. Spending over $400 for a set with no licensing deal in place is crazy. What do I mean by licensing deal? Well, for example, it's not Disney, it's not Star Wars, it's not Harry Potter, and it's not Nintendo, which are examples of licensing deals Lego has um, formed with those respective companies. And Lego has to pay a license fee to those brands for each set sold, which is usually why branded sets are a little bit more expensive. But this set is a pure Lego branded set. Nothing about it is sponsored or licensed, and therefore each part should not be over 11 cents. It's just nuts. Now look, I get it. There are a lot of rare colors and hard to find parts in this. More on that in a second. There's also a bunch of new minifigs, which are all great and certainly help to justify a higher price than previous sets. But we still feel like it should have been closer to about eight cents per part, which would have been almost exactly $300. Let's move on to other grievances. So this build was really challenging and I say that with both of us having a big background and building a lot of sets, uh, we found it to be quite challenging, especially in the middle parts where you're building the large tower. There's a lot of really intricate pieces and parts that come together in the central tower, which we'll cover more in a second, but it truly was a little bit more challenging than some of the other builds we've done lately. That being said, I could argue that it was more fun than the last roller coaster to put together because track started going in a lot quicker than the other build, and we kind of got to start playing with uh, the track and the roller coaster cars early on, which only grew our excitement. Now, right off the bat, one major complaint is we noticed after testing this several times that if you go too slow when you approach the top, the car actually gets stuck. And I'm sure if you have a motor attached, then this is a moot point. But um, for us, it was definitely something that we had to pay attention to because it kept getting stuck as we got closer to the top when doing it slow. The next thing to call out are the empty areas or voids in this set. Um, it takes up a much smaller footprint than the old Lego roller coaster, which uh, we'll touch more on in a second, but there's some areas underneath that just don't have a lot going on and they kind of seem like wasted space. Would have loved to see if they could have wrapped the uh, line path or something around in there like they did with the old roller coaster. As you recall with the old roller coaster, they had cool little details spread all throughout the underside, including like a path for people to, you know, form the line and get to the roller coaster. They had cool little stands like uh, the lemonade stand and they do have vendors for the new one, which I'll show you guys more in a second. Um, but I just thought that the older roller coaster had a little bit more going on underneath the tracks than the new one and would have loved to see them incorporate more down below. And speaking of unfinished areas, what's interesting too on this one, there are areas of the track where there are open studs or unfinished 
sections of the track. And we thought at first maybe they was gonna come later in the steps, but it turns out to just be part of the design. And we would have loved to see them use uh, some of the triangular tiles to kind of you know fill in those gaps. They could have used triangular yellow tiles to match the track, similar to the ones that are behind the chain lift. Um, they could have easily used those in that a uh, little bit darker yellow to complete the track right there. Um, so I just think that that was a miss and something that they could have easily done to make it more cohesive. And while touching on the track, I wish they had used yellow parts um, as the joints because I think with these blue squares, it just doesn't look right to me. I mean, if you look at a modern roller coaster, the track all seems to be one color. I'm okay with it in the back here where it attaches to the support structures because then it just looks like it's going through. But in areas where it's purely the track, I would have liked them to do yellow, which would have carried over the theme from the previous roller coaster, where if you look, they used red tiles on the red track. And I think it just looked a lot better because it made the track uh, look complete without having any spots or areas that kind of stood out. Now we briefly touched on the vendors and there are some really cool ones in this um, set, like the balloon guy, there's a little pretzel, woman who uh, has a cool little cart and then there's also a hot dog guy which got moved i'll slide him out real quick uh, which i thought turned out great but none of them are attached and not even the park bench which to me was a little odd because on the last set almost all of the vendors were built in which was really cool because it's it's almost like each one had a dedicated spot and on this one um, they just kind of move around freely which I truthfully don't really like as much. I like it um, when they each have a spot to go. And I think that that is another thing that they probably could have incorporated better, you know, on the backside of the track uh, where the where the kind of the gap is in the, in the grass area. Now let's touch on the height. The height of this thing is so freaking tall. I mean, I think this is Lego's tallest Lego set ever produced. Um, let me know in the comments if I'm wrong on that, but I believe it's taller than the Daily Bugle and some of the other large sets that have come out recently. This thing is really, really tall. And that could be a con if you have a small city or limited space. So just keep that in mind before ordering. You wanna make sure that this fits in whatever area you have picked out for it because it turned out to be way taller than we expected as evident by the fact that we're reviewing this in our kitchen. Now, the double loops are awesome. We're gonna touch more on that in a second, um, but I do wish the track was longer. I feel like on the other one, you got a much longer ride, whereas with this one, uh, it goes around relatively quickly. I'll show you at full speed, and then I'll also show you um, slowed down. I just feel like, you know, once it got through the other loop, it could have gone around a little bit longer, or alternatively, taken out the second loop and made more of a cool track pattern in the back for a little bit of a longer ride. Now, obviously a lot of that speed is due to the huge drop hill, which is straight down in one area. Um, but I still think it's just a really short ride and just something that they might've been able to make a little bit longer. The flip side of that being that the carts go around really, really well. I haven't had any issues with the carts getting stuck. Whereas on the old roller coaster, um, I'll show you. <laughs> I was setting it up right before filming this and it got stuck right here. The track is a little dusty, so I think maybe I need to clean it, but um, I feel like it just doesn't roll as well as the new one. I mean, you can see it just got stuck right there, right? Um, the new one rolls extremely well. I haven't had any areas where it's gotten stuck. Now, the final two things that I wanna call out before moving to the things that I love. Um, so this is the lift right here that brings the coaster to the top. Now on the bottom here, it kind of just slams down when it drops and there's no like rubber cushioning. They could have used some tires or some of the rubber joints to um, make that not so impactful, I think. I think it just comes down a little too hard and it might damage pieces after repetitive use. And the only other thing, which is kind of small, uh, they only give you one train. Whereas on the old coaster, you got two. And if you recall, they had like a little storage area, which was super cool on the old one. Um, so I wish that they had done two trains on this one with a storage area as well. I think it just makes it even more realistic. So I was a little bummed to only see one train. Let's talk about what we love. We absolutely love the colors of this. We think Lego knocked it out of the park. We think all of them go so well together. It's a really cool tropical set. And as you guys know, we love tropical. Our whole city is tropical, so this will fit in really well. Still trying to figure out if there's a way we can incorporate this. But overall, we thought that Lego did a phenomenal job when picking the colors for this. Um, it's a really beautiful set. 
and everything just goes together really well. All the small details, which we'll touch on more in a second, really come together and it's just a beautiful, beautiful set. Next would be the engineering behind it. I was thoroughly impressed with all the engineering behind this entire contraption. And when I say that, it's not just the counterweight, which is on the backside here. I'll show you how this works real quick before talk, and then talk about the rest. But, but the counterweight pulls up the lift car, uh, which brings the train to the very top of the hill. And the counterweight itself is, is pretty bulky and heavy, but what's really cool is it goes down track on the backside. What happens with the counterweight is it's connected up here over this little pulley and winch system. And it comes all the way down the front side until it eventually connects down here to the lift carriage. And so what this is, is it basically, with a turn of the crank over here, it lifts the cart all the way up to the very top for it to go down. And that mechanism is super cool. So the way that that works is when the car or the train comes down, it gets stopped right here on this little rubber tire, which in and of itself is connected um, via gears. As you can see, it moves to the crank handle over here. And that brings the car around to load it, as you can see. Now, let's say, Let's say that you didn't want it to load over here. Well, when this comes down, it actually creates a stop right here. So if the car were to get back before the lift actually got back in time to catch the car or the train, um, that little red stopper pops up. And then when the lift comes down, it compresses it, which allows the train to move forward. Absolutely brilliant. And what's cool is that allows you to control the entire thing through this little tiny um, crank on the side. So essentially the entire thing can be controlled with just that crank. And the engineering behind it is just brilliant. The old roller coaster, you had to use a number of dials and uh, various brakes and everything else to actually work it. Um, you could continuously work it while using just the crankshaft because the cart would completely go all the way around and then hop back on the chain lift. But if you wanted to do um, anything else at the station, you'd have to you know, use the various levers and whatnot. Whereas with the new one, it's just one single crank on the side, which is so cool. I haven't had any issues with the chain lift or the elevator, anything so far. Whereas with the old one, if you recall, these little tires on top that got um, the train around, they would tend to break or have issues. So for this one to work flawlessly with no issues, other than going slow at the top, like we already called out, then um, to me, that is a huge win. Part of what helps keep the train moving around the track this time is there are some new parts, like this kind of sloped curve part, which is used throughout. So before it used to just be these flat curves like on the old roller coaster, but now they have these, which are angled. So it helps the uh, train build momentum as it goes around corners, which I think really helps keeps everything moving. Also really interesting, which um, I don't know if Lego got this from seeing other people's creations online or what, they used um, the old corner parts and created a sideways part. It's really interesting how it went together in the instructions. It's kind of hard to explain, but basically this is what connects the start of the hill down into the main drop. Uh, just really wild how they put that all together. It's super stable and strong and it really surprised me. And then they also used other cool techniques where like the, the lift part right here isn't actually track. If I bring this up, you can see it is panels, um, which I didn't even know the roller coaster could go on top of but apparently it can because it slides on really well. Other fun details include a balloon that got stuck underneath the um, part of the loop, which is really funny since there's a balloon vendor. There's a cool little squirrel guy and some other graphics that you'll find throughout, um, including a funny uh, squirrel photo in the like, photo booth on the inside, which is just hilarious. And even though it was lacking detail on the back side, they did put some cool greenery on the front side um, with some of the little plant part, as well as a pretty cool palm tree. Now, one of my favorite details that they did, actually on the entryway to the coaster, kind of like the station, um, they used track to create the roof and they used these flag parts or modified uh, tiles 
to clip on to basically where you have the rungs of the, the track to create this really cool sloped roof. And it wasn't just one track piece. They used, if I can get the camera to focus, a different track piece in the middle to create the entryway. Such a cool look and feel that LEGO put together. I would have liked to see the track back here in this part, probably gray, just to make it stand out a little bit different than the rest, or maybe even blue. Like imagine dark blue track, that would have been super cool back here. Um, but on the flip side, the fact that they did give you the same color track means that if you wanted to customize the roller coaster, not only do you get the extra track that comes with the station, but you also get the track that is back here on the left on the lift hill. So theoretically, if you were either parting this out or building your own roller coaster from it, you'd have a lot more track to work with than what's shown on the box. Other cool features, um, the branding is on point. Love how they did the lettering. There's also a really cool tile pattern back here, which took forever, but it was really cool how it turned out. And I thought just like the added little detail like that really makes this, st this set stand out. Um, you can also motorize it by adding some of LEGO's power functions, uh, which is something we may look to do. Um, right now we're just doing the hand crank, but overall the details of this set really did impress us. So what do we think overall? Buy it. Definitely, definitely buy it. Look, despite the price, and if you can afford it, um, and a few of those other grievances mentioned, we think it's an amazing set that will add a lot of movement and height to your own LEGO collection. And truthfully, it was a lot of fun to put together. It took about six hours total, and almost all of the build was fun. Only a few sections here and there were repetitive or tedious, but overall, it was actually a lot more fun than the first roller coaster that we put together. Um, we got to start playing with the track and the cars while putting it together, which I think made for a much better building experience. Whereas with the old roller coaster, you didn't really get to that stage until later on in the build. So again, if it's you know within your budget and you can afford it, and if you have the space for it, since it's quite large, uh, we definitely recommend adding this to your city. It's a super cool build, but we do hope that LEGO reconsiders pricing in the future, as we think it is a little stiff for what you get. But again, overall, love the build. Thanks for watching. Um, hope to see you again next time. And that's it for today.